So I'm going to explore an adaptive component placement tutorial or sample file, I guess I should say, for Dynamo. And <coughs> an important thing to do is to start off with the right file. So most of the samples come with, or many of the samples come with existing RFA or RVT files to open up. And most of them are kept, uh, let's see, I'll open up my families and I'll look for my installation folder. Most people will have installed by default somewhere in here. I'm going to look for Dynamo Whip and the samples package. So this is basically going to be whichever file browser or file area you saved your files to when you first installed. I'm going to go into samples and I'm going to get my adaptive components. Base file, RFA. Now you can do this on other files, but this is helpful because it has a couple of lines put in it already, uh, like so. You can see these lines that I'm going to use. And also, importantly, it has a couple of adaptive components. 3.ac, I can just take this out and place it. This is just a very simple file, like that. It's just a couple of lines. And some other things are a little bit more complicated. So, and they're not even actually all that complicated. These are just other files that I've made with the adaptive component functionality. So if I edit this family, I can just take a quick look at it. It's just a three-point family. I'm not going to get into actually the authoring of this, but it uses some fairly standard tools to make this. But <coughs> the point is that I've got a couple of loaded families and I've got some lines. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up Dynamo. And I'm going to get the sample file that basically goes along with this. Now, the way that the Dynamo files work is that if they've been saved using some elements from an existing Revit or Vasari file, they're going to remember these elements. So if I go and I go samples, adaptive components, adaptive component placement, see, I'm going to load up my definition here. And the first thing that you'll notice is that there are a bunch of select curve nodes and what these things do is they allow you to go in and pick elements out of the Revit environment to use for your scaffolding and to feed them into the rest of the definition. Now you'll notice that each one of these already actually has an element ID associated with it. That is to say each one of these remembers that it selected one of these in the past and I saved it. Um, I'm just going to go back through and I'm going to pick them again just to sort of show you how these work. So if I get my select curve and I go change, I can go in here and I can pick an element. And I can pick another element and I can pick another element. So even though this has been saved with this particular file, I can open this up on other files and I can reassociate each one of these curves with another element out here. So that's sort of a detail, but the big thing I want to show you about here is what these guys do. So the point here is that I want to place a bunch of these adaptive components that we're looking at. These guys, I want to take these guys, I want to place them along each one of these lines with the idea that I could take these guys and I could manually go through and I could go pick and pick and pick and I could host them on these lines like that. But I'm going to use Dynamo to do it and I'm going to use Dynamo to do it in a way that's a little bit more orderly or controlled. So I've already picked these lines and I've identified them here in the graph. So I'm passing each one of these curves into an XYZ array on curves. So what this guy does is that it divides up essentially that curve into some number of XYZ coordinates on it and then it spits out some XYZs. So I'm just going to unplug a couple things just so we can show a couple things as we go along here. I'm going to put a watch node on here just to see what it's spitting out. So if I type in watch and I get one of these guys, I'm going to put in a watch node just to see what's coming out of the XYZ here. And I'm going to run that. And you can see that now I've got my list. So I've got a list of XYZ coordinates. And that's basically the division of this curve, which is this curve out here, by some number of increments. Nothing too crazy. I'm just going to detach that for now. So what that's doing is that then I'm passing a list of XYZs out of each one of these nodes. Now the problem is, is that if I just go ahead and run this, I'll just 
will start running automatically. And I can go in here and I can look at this watch 3D node. And if I zoom to fit, I'll see all of my representation of my geometry in here. So I can see that I've got a series of points that are each lined up along this line. And each one of these guys is going to be in order, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, along each line. Well, what I want to do, though, is I want to, I don't want to lace up one, two, three along one line. I want to go one, two, three between lines, one, two, three, so that I can span them. So the trick is, how do I gang up, you know, index number one with index number two with index number three? and then collect them and pipe them into my adaptive component. Well, this is where my combine node comes in here. So what I want to do is I want to take all of my incoming lists of XYZs, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to take my combine node, which basically means for everything that comes into this list, and I can expand or contract that list, by the way, if I have more things I want to pipe into it, for every one of the things that comes in on this list, I want to do something to it. And I could do something like I could do an addition operation that happens on each one of the items that comes into this list, or I could do other operations. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a list on them. I'm going to apply a list to each element that comes in to this combined node. And what that means is that now if I take my com the output from my combine and I pipe it into my watch, we'll see that my data is looking a little bit different. So before, I'm just going to get one of these guys copy paste, and I'm going to pipe this guy into it. So we can just compare how our data looks. So here I've got a list of a series of XYZ points, which go along this line. And now with my combine, I've now got a list of lists in each one of my sublists contains a group of one, two, three XYZ coordinate points. In each one of those lists of XYZ coordinate points is basically the first one of each one of these lines, and the second, and the third, and so on. So what this allows me to do is I can now gang up all of my XYZs into a list that makes sense for what I'm trying to do. So now that I've got a gang of lists coming out in an orderly fashion, I can pipe them into my adaptive component by points. So if I take this and I put it into that guy, my adaptive component also needs to know what component to place. So I've got three points. I've got the three point AC, which is the simplest one. And I pipe that guy in. And you just saw that this just popped in. So what it has done is it's gone in and it said, okay, for each one of those gangs of XYZ points, one, two, three, I want you to lace them together, one, two, three, into a component. And because it's a component, I can swap it out, pow, and get, you know, more complex families that I've authored outside of the graph. So I don't have to have all of the complexity of this geometry inside of my graph. My graph gets to stay um, gets to stay relatively simple, right? It's just saying I've got a bunch of points on curves and I'm going to order them in a particular way and then I want you to lace them together on a family. I don't really care what family it is, just want to put them all together. So, another way that you can also sort of think about how it's dealing with these um, ordering of points is I'm also just going to put in um, I'm going to put in some raw geometry, like I'll I'll put in an arc, so I can get uh, uh, arc by start middle end. Let's do that. So for the arc by start middle end, I can do a similar kind of thing where I'm going to take my x's, my y's, and my z's, pipe them together, and if I look at my arc instead of my component, I'm going to file that right into my thing. You can see that I've got a similar effect, right? Because now I'm all all that I'm doing is I'm I'm threading geometry together, and I can see it represented here. And again, this isn't showing out here in the Revit environment or the Vasari environment, because this is just raw geometry. These aren't Revit elements that are coming out of here. This is a geometric arc, and it's a little hard sort of wrapping your head around that sometimes. But um, 
the idea is that you can sort of deal in raw abstracted geometry in here in Watch 3D, and you can deal with the real Revit elements, which are more than geometry. They're sort of they're all the metadata that goes along with families, and it's counting, it's this and that and the other. So you can parse out, you know, do you want to deal with heavier family geometry, or do you want to deal with lighter weight abstracted geometry? Anyway, that's sort of a quick and dirty exploration of the adaptive component placement sample. A um, couple other things on it that I guess I didn't really show was, uh, you know, this is all hooked up to a slider, so if you decide you want to have more or less of those families, you can crank it up to 20. You can see that it percolates right through here. I can make it down into a lower number, and you know, there's a little bit of lag as it regenerates all that family geometry. And because this is running automatically, it's going to update. If I go in and grab one of these points, I can stretch it up. And all of my families are going to catch up with that in a second. And again, I can now f save this definition and open it up later on with this family. And it's going to remember each one of these elements that it placed so that I can open it up later on and I can continue manipulating it. So there's going to be a persistent relationship between the graph here and the stuff that it creates out here. So you can come back to it later. This isn't just a sort of fire and forget operation. You can keep, keep going with it. So that's that sample. I hope that that was helpful. Thanks for watching.